All thanks and praises due to the Basis Foundation. God is most great, and then has the right to be worshiped by you. Hello, everyone. This is Step Dog, the Hip Hop Prophet, and I'm here with the next video in the YouTube series. And the name of this video is The Book of Revelation Revealed, Part 42, The Threefold Hallelujah Over Babylon's Fall. And I'm going to read that section right now. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries, and he has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. That's the first hallelujah. So I'm going to break this down by the, the hallelujahs. Okay, this is what's going to take place. You're going to have the day of resurrection. And on the day of resurrection, everybody who was meant to receive a mark from God is going to have it. And then you're going to have the seven plagues of, I mean, the seven bowls of God's wrath. Now, during that time, uh, Muslims of the Golden Rule are going going to start going around and collecting up the people with marks, and they're going to start to be decapitated, and they're going to be start, and they're we're going to start throwing them on the hellfire pits. Now, basically, after all of the seven bowls of God's wrath occur, you know we're going to continue to collect up the marks and you know decapitate them and throw them in the hellfire pits. When the final number of like when the number of marks gets really small there is going to be a special day set aside for the final group of marks where they're all going to be decapitated at the same time all around the world and that is going to be known as the first day because that is the first day of the kingdom of god and it's also the first day where all you have are muslims of the golden rule Basically, all the people who received marks, who were born before the hour of judgment, will be gone, and all you will have are Muslims of the Golden Rule on the planet. And this is the first hallelujah. This is what they're speaking about right here. Um, and basically, um, you know, they're saying hallelujah, salvation and glory. Basically, the great multitude is the Muslims of the Golden Rule that are on the planet right now. You know what I mean? I mean, John heard it in heaven, but he was in heaven at the time. So um, this is this, you know, this is basically all the Muslims of the golden rule at the time saying, hallelujah. You know what I mean? Salvation and glory and power belong to our God forever and ever. For his judgments are just and true. You know what I mean? He has condemned the great prostitute, the devil's kingdom. You know what I mean? The Illuminati who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. Not only that, but it's the Zionist and the Jewish man and their banking system as well, because that existed before the Illuminati came to be. Even though, you know, the devil, devil's kingdom always went through stages, the Illuminati ended up being the sixth, you know, kingdom. And who corrupted the earth with her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. Well, basically, you know, God avenged all of the prophets and people who sacrificed their lives or were victims of an, an Illuminati blood sacrifice. God avenged them all through, you know, God's judgment. And basically, this is the final day of that judgment. You know what I mean? And, and again, they shouted, Hallelujah. The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. So basically... The first hallelujah that they say there is when all the heads get chopped off. And then the second hallelujah is when the bodies get thrown on the hellfire pit. <laughs> that's why it refers to the smoke. So that's what those two hallelujahs are. And that's going to be known as the first day. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen. Alleluia. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Okay. This is the second hallelujah. 
this is the hallelujah for the day of the lamb. Now what the day of the lamb is, that's the day when actually my son, my firstborn son, the one who the devil uh, possesses, his partner in sodomy, you know, the, the girl who decides, well, she loves, you know, um, the, the child's name is going to be Matthew. That's already decided. I did that in honor of my younger brother, you know what I mean, who's my mother's ultimate pet and has helped her basically since he was a child to try to destroy me. So his name is going to be Matthew. So Matthew's going to be executed. His partner in sodomy, she's going to be executed. And her helper, whoever assisted her in making it possible, is going to be executed. Because like I said, I'm going to be watching my son all the time. He's going to be with me just about all the time because I'm going to be the one who's going to have to watch him. And when I'm not watching him, you know, he's going to be secured in a room by the belt. And like I said, nobody can touch the belt. If you touch the belt and try to unloosen the buckle, you die. So he's going to be secured, but basically what this girl is going to do, she's going to get somebody to help her create a situation where she can then, you know, seduce my son. Because like I said, when he wears the collar from the neck up, he's going to be fine. He's going to be able to pray and believe in God and all this other stuff. That's what the power of the collar does. But below his neck, his, his the rest of his body, that's why he's going to be the last child actor. Because um, basically after this goes down, children will not be allowed to act or do anything professionally ever again. You will not be able to earn a living or make money until you turn 21 because that is when your education in the kingdom of God ends. They will not be allowed to do anything like that. If they want to perform in um, projects at school and stuff like that, that's where they do it. But they will never be paid professionally as a child to do this type of stuff ever again. He will be the last one. And the reason that he is the last one is because God wants everybody to see what the devil does to him. Because he is going to be the last possession of the devil in this world. And the reason he is separate from the people that were executed on the first day is because he was born after the hour of judgment. And unfortunately, this promise was made and it was kept and all that stuff. So it had to be kept. And this doesn't have, he wasn't born until after the hour of judgment. So that's why he is separate. But basically, when these three people receive their marks and they are executed, that is the second hallelujah. And that is going to be known as the day of the Lamb. And the reason it's an, a hallelujah is because at that moment, all the Muslims on the golden rule on the planet know that that was the devil's last possession in this world. It's gone. And the devil is trapped in the pit for over 1,000 years. Okay, so that's the second hallelujah. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah, for our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come. And his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Okay, I'm going to explain this section first before I read the rest. Because I want to talk about the Jewish girl a little bit. Okay. The perfect man and the perfect woman both come from the line of the Hebrews or the Jews. Now, obviously, I call her the Jewish girl for a reason, because when I met her, she was a girl, and she's Jewish. So that's why I refer to her as the Jewish girl. Her first name is Marissa. I don't know her last name. But um, the deal with Marissa is this. When she met me, um, she was a virgin, and she wanted you know, me to be her first and her to be my first. Now, like I said, I met her 19 years ago and my mother got in the middle of that and, you know, basically messed it up. 
but I encountered her, it's a little bit over a year ago, over in New Jersey. And I didn't recognize her at the time. And God did that on purpose because God knew because of this dirt ball that lives next to me, Eliud Cruz, once he found out, you know, if I hooked up with her, she would have got killed. They would have killed her. There's no doubt. I even had a vision about it where she came out of a door and was coming towards my car running with a big smile on her face. And all of a sudden she got mowed down with automatic weapons. So God basically let me know, don't do it. Also, when I seen her, it was November, and November and winter was right around the corner. In the vision I had, she was wearing a winter coat, and she was all bundled up. So, you know, um, God did that on purpose. God did not want me to realize who she was. But she deliberately came to me to try to, you know, get me to recognize her and to let me know, yeah, it's me from all those years ago. But she wouldn't say it, come out and say it. She, wanted, she thought I would recognize her, and I didn't. But she's waited all these years to be with me. That's what makes her the perfect woman. You know what I mean? Uh, the way she, I mean, I don't know all the details about her, but the, I'll find out once I get to talk to her. But um, the way she lived her life is the way God wants women to live in this world. And that's what makes her the perfect woman. Because Jesus was the perfect man because he had the perfect relationship with God. I mean, having the perfect relationship with God doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means you have that perfect relationship. That's what makes you the perfect man. Well, for her, she was the perfect woman because she has that perfect relationship with God for a woman. So that's why she's dressed in fine linen, because she's a very righteous woman and she is very deserving to be the first bride of the golden rule. Because this is going to be the first wedding of the golden rule. This is going to be the most famous wedding um, of the Golden Rule because it's the first one. And like I said, uh, well, I'm going to explain a little bit about the famousness of it as I uh, talk here. But um, I wanted to explain about her. Not only that, but while the devil see, while after the devil takes possession of my son, she can't be with me. We have to terminate our servant agreement because basically the devil's going to want to hurt her because she's allowing me to deal with the son. You know what I mean? She's going to agree to do it because she knows, you know, this is what God wants. So she has to stay away from me, you know, for a few years even after this. So, you know, um, because of that, I mean, she's considered, you know, very righteous in the eyes of God. Then the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, these are the true words of God. Basically, the wedding supper is going to be the first wedding reception. The wedding is going to be recorded live, and the wedding reception is going to be recorded live, and I'm going to perform at the wedding reception. And obviously, it's the first wedding reception of the Golden Rule, so, you know, anybody who gets to be there, they're going to remember that they were at the first wedding reception of the golden rule. At this, I fell at my feet to worship him, but he said, don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters and hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy um, who bears testimony to Jesus. Okay, well, the elder is the one telling John this. And John goes down to pray to worship him and the elder's like, no, you don't pray. Don't worship me. You don't pray to me. You don't pray to the angels. You don't pray to anybody else. You don't pray to Jesus. Worship God. You know what I mean? Because God, there is only one God, so worship God. Do not bow down and worship and pray uh, to anybody else. That's just like me. If people bow down in front of me, I'm going to say don't do that. But if I raise the, he the, the rod above my head and I lower my head, that's when you bow because that's when it's time to bow to the rod because the rod is the rep re representation of God in this world. And that is the section, Threefold Hallelujah over Babylon's Fall. All thanks and praises due to the Basis Foundation. God is most great. None has the right to be worshipped but you.